<laughs> Portsmouth have gone up a division. They're in the Champions League now. So everyone's celebrating, and the football ground's just behind our house. Touchline, near side again. And they're keeping possession, possession fairly well, just as I said that, they almost lose it. And now they find a bit of space, and there's a ball that's put Pompey in danger. And the ball across the face of goal is in, and Devontae Cole has scored. And the flag stays down. In truth, the shot that came in from McAtee, he totally mishit it. Illegally so, foul, hands in the back. Pompey free kick, which Pack goes quickly forward to take. And wants to spread play to Abu Kamara on the right wing. It's a good ball, and Kamara's got it. And we know how dangerous he can be as he cuts in field. And looks at the bit of Yangi, good turn from Yangi. Ball will fall well, and it's blocked. Yangi scores! Pompey a level, and Yangi wants the ball back. Portsmouth score with their first attack. Yangi's left foot, rifling it high into the net. It's Portsmouth 1, Barnsley 1. Oh, what a game we have. Yeah, first meaningful attack, really, wasn't it? I think that, that's the first time I think Kamara's actually got on the ball. As he does so often, takes his man on, finds a nice little pass into Anjurin. He's tried to turn and shoot, but it ends up behind Yenge, and Yenge swivels, left foot, just drills it down the middle. I don't think the keeper's thinking high there, isn't he? He's thinking low either side. And Kamara is just, he caused chaos. It caused chaos and they couldn't get quite get reorganised. Preston for a number of years in the championship out to the left-hand side. And Barnsley again coming forward and Phillips has got a great chance and Phillips has scored. The, sorry, McAtee's put it away. The flag is down. John McAtee. Just sit down. What can he make on the right? Offensive players in the Barnsley penalty area. Sadie back to goal. Trying to turn around the corner. Fly challenge comes in. And the referee says penalty kick. It's a penalty to Portsmouth. A foul on Sadie. Barnsley are pleading the case with the assistant referee. Referee just urging them out. Colby Bishop steps up and scores! Away to the keeper's right. And that might be the goal that secures Portsmouth's return to the championship. Bishop is fired up. Port with a level, Pompey 2, Barnsley 2. Right, is this ain't over yet? <laughs> Don't celebrate just yet. This Barnsley team want to win the game, as I said before, 2 1 up. They were going to get the third. And this great fan base behind him and the support, Portsmouth should be able to see this out, but it isn't going to be easy. Can't have any more injuries in the celebrations. Cross comes in for Nippos, headers into the net! Surely Pompey are heading for the championship. It's shock to see from a corner again. We've seen it so many times. It's Portsmouth three, Barnsley two. It might be the title. Oh, people are running on the pitch. And Bishop and others are trying to say, look, get off. Save it till the end. Get what back in the stand. Doing? Get off the pitch. Well, and now the ball is being sent forward the final whistle goes the crowd are all over the pitch 12 years after being relegated from the championship Portsmouth are back in the second tier of English football a rookie manager has worked his magic and brought joy to Fratton Park Portsmouth are promoted as League One champions it's Portsmouth 3 Barnsley 2 Amazing, absolutely amazing.
we are here in Portsmouth, or should I say Pompey, really. I mean, that's like... <laughs> and my first guest is... And this is actually his name. No, I promise you, I've looked at his passport. John Portsmouth Football Club Westwood, welcome to the programme. <laughs> now, John, uh, 60 Portsmouth tattoos all over you. Um, and your big thing you're known for, you know, right throughout the country, is you constantly ring this bell at the match. It's called the Pompey Chimes. Don't get people get, get a little bit cheesed off with you sometimes. Oh, yes. I've been told to put that in many a places I shouldn't mention. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, no. So, John, what, I mean, what is this fanaticism for Portsmouth football? It's my club? life. It is my life. And it's the lives of many people in Pompey. I'm, no, I'm just a fan the same as anyone else. No well, doubt you're about a that. Bit more than a fan. No, 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 no I'm not. I just show it in a different way. There's as many passionate Pompey fans as me, I just show it in a different way. There's something about this city. It's on an island. And it's got that island mentality, just like England. It's an island country. That is what it gives, gives you that mentality. It gives you that difference. Well, you clearly believe. Working... No, you clearly believe it. But isn't the problem, John, that since 2008, which must have been a great day at Wembley, let's be frank about it. There's been nothing to celebrate, really, has there? <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> there's always. <laughs> something to sell about, about Pompey. We've got fantastic owners, we've got stability, they've just bought the training facilities. This has been the most exciting time to be a Pompey fan in my life, if I'm honest. We've got stability, we've bought our own training facilities, we've got a competitive budget, we've pledged 11.5 million to spend on the new ground, and we're still competing with the top teams. They may be spending more, but they've got all their infrastructure in place. We've these clubs are owned by owners that have done the same to us. They've leveraged debt against the club. Yeah. We haven't got any of that, boys. We've got stability. So are you telling me that Portsmouth Football Club is on the up? Yeah, no doubt. Pompey Without a doubt. Up. One thing that's... Is he right? Is he right? <laughs> one, thing that, one thing that's never been broken in Pompey is our spirit. Because we're Pompey. Well, I tell you what, John Anthony Portsmouth Football Club Westwood, I love that point and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Well, and John's right, you know, if you can't break the spirit of a place, you'll never break the place. So I like that. That was very, very powerful. I've known John Westwood for many, many years. That gentleman is fine. He is a brilliant guy. At football, he's a lunatic. Portsmouth! People make him out to be the wrong sort of person. He has actually a great persona. first game I went to uh, was in 1976, I was 13, and it was Boxing Day, home to Brighton, and uh, it was just fantastic, 32,000 crowd, and uh, the place was just rocking, I just thought, unbelievable, I knew right from then that I wanted to be a Pompey fan until I died. The land was fantastic, and I was in Ben, they're brilliant, it's a, it's a supporters club. You know, who's the bloke in the big, big hat and all that, like, you know, everybody knows him throughout the world, I think. John's Pompey. My name is John Anthony Portsmouth Football Club, Westford, 46, and I was born in Liss in Hampshire, which is a shame, really, because my brother and sister were both born in St Mary's in Pompey.
football's my passion. I mean, obviously, it's my life, football's my life, but I'm lucky to be able to have two passions, really, because I've got a passion for books, and I love the books, I love the trade. And uh, the beauty of this trade is you learn something new every day. You're always learning something in this trade. I mean, I love old things, I love old buildings, and, and obviously old books, and of course, you've been, I've grown up with it, so it's in the blood, really. And uh, it's just a fantastic trade to be in. It's like, it's, it's like in a time warp, the book trade. I mean, even the business practices now all haven't changed much over the years. I changed my name because I like Portsmouth Football Club's my life. I mean, everything about me, I, I just love the club. And it was an extension of my passion for the club to incorporate it in my name. I just thought it was completely natural. Even though my family and friends thought it was completely barking, to me, I've never had a problem with it. And uh, if something is your life, why not incorporate it in your name? Use it every day. I just love everything upon me. I just, it's another, again, it's an extension of passion for the club. I just love every, everything about collecting stuff on Pompey, whether it be watches, whether it be pens, scarves, hats, mugs, whatever. I just like to have it in the room. The business owns basically this building, which incorporates the flat, which I live in, and the tattoo shop downstairs, which used to be part of the bookshop. I was chatting to a mate who was tattooing at the time. He wanted a shop to go in and they do piercings down there. So from our point of view, we're getting a rent. I've got a flat out of it, and we've got an investment for the future in the building. And I've always liked tattoos ever since I was a kid. I used to see the geezers with tattoos on. But I was all scared of needles. I didn't have my first tattoos, I was about 25. And once I had them, I had to have more. I, I, I like the look as well. I just like, I think it's a it's a geezer thing, tattoos. And it, it's just, it's a, at football, when I was younger, I used to see all these geezers with tattoos. And I, it was just, it was just a thing I liked. I liked the look of it. I liked the but it does represent me. Portsmouth Football Club's my life, as I've changed my name by Depop. So to have Pompey all over me is just another extension of my passion. I've been ejected from a few grounds because in the Premiership especially, where I've stuck out and uh, making a noise and nowadays football's becoming a bit PC and they don't like people who stick out, make too much noise, show a bit of passion. And some grounds you go to, I mean, I, Saturday, for instance, I was up at Middlesbrough, I got kicked out, and I've sat down in my seat and I'm right at the back of the Pompey fans. And uh, Stuart came up to me and says, you're on CTV, sit down. Uh, are we going to throw you out? And I said, well, everyone in front of me is st standing up. So I've got to stand up, so otherwise I won't be able to see the game. Anyway, to cut a long story short, they weren't having it. And they said, oh, well, that's right, and they used the word, you're the ringleader. And I said, well, I'll just sing for me club. I went down at half-time and... They asked me to come over and see them, and they just pushed me out the doors. I've only been married once, and that was enough. <laughs> no, no, if I'm honest, I, I was married once, and uh, it, was, it was good times, but the football sort of um, came in the way a little bit, if I'm honest. And I'll never forget when we got the full shit, she said, I thought you'd change. And I said, you should have known me better than that. So, that is sad, really, but that's life. And you, you only get one life, so you've got to live it. Now, I've got two children, my boy's 18 and my girl's 14. Uh, they think I'm nuts, but they, under, they, they understand the passion. They're both Pompey fans themselves. I must admit, my character at times does feel like Jekyll and Hyde because uh, during the week, you know, I have to be mummy P's and Q's and I have to be polite. And uh, the trade I'm in, the antiquarian book trade, is very sedate. But it's lovely, you know, it's it's quiet and it's, it's gentlemanly like. It really is old school, the antique book trade. And then at football, I just turn into this raving lunatic. So it is, all this, all this gear on and all this sort of stuff. But no, no, the, the actual passion from watching football comes from my heart. It comes from nowhere else. I can't describe it. It's just really weird. Ever since that first day, you know, down here watching against Brighton, it's just, I love the football club. I love Portsmouth. It's a working class city. What it's what you see is what you get with Pompey. And I, I think that's the same with what I wear. I, I mean, it doesn't matter what I wear. It's, it's just about passion. The whole city is about passion.
like the old dreadlocks and that, they look a bit more wild. Or Sorry about that. <laughs> So, hello, Mum. Hello, so I'll be about a quarter of an hour or so. About a quarter of an hour. Okay, love you, bye.
Major Jack Tin seems pretty confident that the cop is going south this year. I can only say how pleased we are to go to Wembley for the third time. And in my opinion, I have every confidence in our boys that will do the trick this time. In fact, I'm certain of it. Although Portsmouth will be making their third appearance in the final at Wembley, they have yet to prove victorious. Perhaps 1939 is to be the year when the club will register final success. It's certain at any rate that they'll play a terrific match. Pompey have no cat, but they have Jack Tin's famous spats. These are said to be extremely lucky. More people at Wembley than ever before. My Pompey supporters are quite for you. As well they may, here go the famous Pompey Chimes. Football is a wonderful game. The Queen is here too. To see Portsmouth in white shorts and the Wolves in the dark. And Guthrie wins the task for Pompey. And from the kick-off, the experts must be holding their breath. For the boys from the naval port, who only a few weeks ago were fighting against relegation to the second division, are right on top. And mighty Scott, the Wolves goalie, is as busy as a flea at a party. No score for the first 31 minutes. Then Morgan of Portsmouth kicks a long ball down the field to Anderson. Anderson to Barlow, who left the Wolves only two months ago. And Barlow turns the tables on his old team. Put Portsmouth one up. Flags flying in the Navy. After that, you'd think the Wolves would fight back, but they don't seem to have the chance. As wave after wave of the Portsmouth attack surges round the Wolves' goal. One minute from half-time and another Portsmouth onslaught. The ball swings over from the right and runs loose to Anderson. Anderson puts it just wide of Scott's right hand and makes it two up at half-time. So the Navy splices the main brace. The second half opens with sensation. Anderson kicks off and within 30 seconds, Barlow drives for the Wolves' goal. Scott saves, but Parker rushes in to make it three for Pompey. That odd goal brings the crowd to its toes for some of the finest football ever seen at Wembley in a cup final. Keep your eye on Scott with the number one on his back in the Wolves' goal or a series of saves with a touch of genius. But Scott can't hold off the mass attack forever and Pompey get yet another. They got to the final ten years ago and were beaten. All right, pal, we know how many beans make four. They got to the final five years ago and were beaten again. But the third time, well, you know the rest, as Guthrie comes up for the happiest moment of his life. We all know that the Navy is Britain's sure shield, but the sailors won't be on the water tonight. But the main focus was a chance to make real history and land a major trophy. A Wembley final was uncharted territory for Harry Redknapp and for most Pompey fans. 69 years had passed since the club's last FA Cup final. Championship side Cardiff under former Southampton boss Dave Jones had their own ambitions to take the cup out of England for only the second time. But Pompey were determined to make it a day and a season to remember. as Parry's doing here. Almost a hit there, the one of his shirt tucked as well. As James came out very, very quickly. Montari's ahead of it. This is Horaidasa. Now Montari, good ball in for Kanu. Danger here, still Kanu. Surely, no, off the post. What an opportunity there. It's a wonderful, wonderful footwork. And it deserved the goal, but he couldn't just stroke it home. Diara, he's got wonderful control. Utaka now, maybe a chance to show that flex. Options in the middle with Kanu and Kratcha and Montari. Enkelman half saved him, and it's turned in. Kanu has got it this time. It was a fumble, I'm afraid, by the keeper. And Kanu, who missed an absolute sitter earlier on, has made amends. 
Well, to be fair, it's been coming. Entelman hasn't looked confident right from the start. Utaka out on that far side, just kept hold of the ball, kept trying to get a little bit of space to get round Capaldi there. Eventually there, he just creates half a yard for himself, drives it in. That's a poor parry from Entelman. And, of course, Canu has seen all the game that he keeps parrying and blocking things. And that's another simple goal for him here at Wembley, exactly like he got in the semi-final. Campbell keeping a watchful eye on Johnson. James came, but didn't quite collect. And then it's Lubens! No, the whistle had already gone. That will not count. Dismay, despair for Cardiff. But I uh, clearly heard the whistle, even in this uh, incredible noise at Wembley today. It's a lovely flick there by Crapchart. It could be in here. Cano! Oh! It just squirt wide there by a deflection. It should have been two, really, for Portsmouth. Use it now. On the prowl here, and forcing the save. He got his angles right that time, Peter Eckelman. Well, to be fair to Nugent, he got himself in that position there. He couldn't see anything else that was on. He thought, well, I'll have a pop. Barros right upfield here. And it's Pompey Giants of Wembley Joy, 69 years on from their last FA Cup final. His famous old club have at last Another triumph to celebrate, and Harry Redknapp, in his first experience of a major occasion, is a Wembley winner. Kanu, man of the match, the only goal of the match. A glorious afternoon at Wembley capped the greatest season in most Portsmouth fans' memory. The Pompey Chimes rang out to acclaim the first trophy in nearly 60 years, and place in Europe for the first time in the club's history. For Harry Redknapp, it was the sweetest moment of his long and illustrious career. His first major final, his first trophy. Many in the squad had tasted success before with other clubs, but even for the old stages like Campbell and James, this would be an achievement to savour. Pompey are back amongst the best in the land, and new legends were made at Wembley on the 17th of May 2008.